most likely that the invasion started sometime in the mid-1980s. That's when the first reported sighting was of lionfish just north of Miami. Robotic drones just spotted thousands of invasive lionfish. Then suddenly they turned rogue in a way no one expected. For decades, we treated this like a nuisance, but the latest footage reveals a factory of monsters hidden in the blue. Well, lionfish really are sort of the perfect storm. Uh, I think in many ways, as invasive species goes, they have a lot of characteristics which make them very successful in, in the invaded range. We are talking about giant fish the size of dinner plates, breeding by the millions where no human can reach. You might think that removing a few fish at the beach helps, but get this. For every one we see, there are 10,000 hiding in the shadows. This discovery changes everything we know about the war for our oceans. The Silent Conqueror of the Atlantic Deep The ocean has been screaming for help for a long time, and honestly, we barely noticed. For years, the lionfish invasion was just something people talked about at beach bars or local fishing contests. We thought we could handle it. We thought that if we just organized enough diving trips and put them on the menu at fancy restaurants, we could keep the problem under control. But here is the catch. We were only fighting the scouts on the front porch. The real enemy force has been hiding in the twilight zone at depths where the water pressure would turn a human into a pancake. When researchers finally sent heavy duty drones down to investigate, they expected to see a few fish here and there. What they recorded instead was a scene straight out of a horror movie. It proves that our battle for the ocean is failing in ways we never even imagined. This is the story of the invader that cannot be stopped. And it starts with a single fish, just one. It looks beautiful and elegant with stripes like a tiger and fins that fan out like the feathers of a peacock. It looks harmless floating there in the blue water of the Atlantic. But do not let that beauty fool you. This is the face of a monster. It is easily the most destructive creature to ever enter our waters. For years, we treated the lionfish invasion like a bad flu season for the ocean. We told ourselves that if we just sent enough divers down with spears, we could keep the numbers down. We hoped that nature would eventually find a balance and the local sharks would start eating them. But nature is not finding a balance. Nature is being eaten alive. To understand why the recent drone footage is so terrifying, you have to understand the monster we are dealing with. The lionfish is not from around here. It belongs in the Indo-Pacific, thousands of miles away. But sometime in the 80s, they got loose off the coast of Florida. Some say it was Hurricane Andrew in 1992 that smashed a massive aquarium tank, spilling six of them into the sea. Others say it was just careless pet owners dumping them. It does not matter how they got there. What matters is what they did next. They did not just survive, they conquered. In their home range, they have enemies like large groupers and sharks that know how to eat them. But in the Atlantic, they are invincible. Nothing recognizes them as food. Their venomous spines are a perfect defense system. A shark looks at a lionfish and sees a do not touch sign. If a predator does try to take a bite, it gets a mouthful of venomous spikes. It learns very quickly never to do that again. So they eat and they eat and they eat. A single lionfish can reduce the number of native fish on a small reef by nearly 80% in just five weeks. Think about that for a second. 80%. That is not a decline. That is a massacre. They swallow everything. Baby snapper, grouper, and the cleaners that keep the reef healthy. They are basically vacuum cleaners with stomachs that can expand 30 times their normal size. Scientists have found lionfish stomachs so full of prey that they are bulging out. Yet the fish is still hunting. They have found rare species inside them that scientists have never even seen alive. They are erasing biological history before we can even record it, and the reproduction is the stuff of nightmares. A single female can release two million eggs a year. Two million. These eggs are bound in a slimy mass that floats on the surface. It rides the ocean currents like a raft. This allows the eggs to travel hundreds of miles before they hatch. They float from Florida to Bermuda and from the Bahamas to the Carolinas. They are spreading like a virus, colonizing every spot from New York to Brazil. We have been trying to fight this biological wildfire with water pistols. We send divers down with spears and they do a great job. They clear a reef and bag a hundred fish. We take pictures and have cookouts and pat ourselves on the back. But deep down, the scientists knew something was wrong. 
No matter how many fish we removed in the shallows, the numbers kept bouncing back. It was like fighting a monster that grows two heads for every one you cut off. There had to be a source. There had to be a place where these things were coming from, a place that we could not reach. It is not that simple though, because while we were looking at the sunlit reefs, something else was happening much deeper down. The hidden fortress in the dark abyss. Here is the problem with humans. We are fragile. We are bags of water and bone and we are not built for pressure. When we dive, we have limits. Most divers can only go down to about 130 feet. Even the experts rarely push past 300 feet because it is just too dangerous. The nitrogen in your blood turns toxic and the pressure squeezes your lungs. One mistake and you do not come back up. So for decades, our war against the lionfish has been a surface war. We assumed that if we cleared the shallow reefs, we were making a dent. We hoped the deep ocean was too cold or too dark for them, but scientists started to get suspicious. They began to look at the twilight zone. This is the area between 100 and 500 feet deep. It is a shadowed world of sponge gardens and ancient rocks. For a long time, this zone was a black box. We simply did not know what was down there. It is too deep for scuba, but too shallow for the big submarines that visit the Titanic. It was a blind spot, and nature loves a blind spot. Biologists thought that the deep reefs were acting as a bunker. They called it the depth refuge hypothesis. The idea was that the fish we see in the shallows are just the overflow. The real bosses were living deep down, but proving it was a nightmare until we got the technology. Some fishermen who dropped lines down 400 feet started pulling up lionfish, but they were not just any fish. They were giants, fish the size of a dinner plate. This sparked a wave of panic. If the big ones were deep, that meant the breeding stock was safe. We were pulling weeds while leaving the long roots intact. We needed to go where the pressure would crush a human chest like a soda can. This is what led to a new era of exploration. It was no longer just about biology, it was about engineering. We had to build machines that could survive the battlefield, because what was waiting in the dark was bigger than anyone expected. Building a robot that can swim and hunt in these conditions is an engineering nightmare. Salt water is brutal and eats electronics. At 400 feet, the pressure is immense. You do not have GPS or radio waves down there. Once that robot goes down, it is on its own. But the threat was so great that people started getting creative. This is the kind of innovation that usually only happens during a war. And in a way, this is a war for the survival of the Atlantic. One group called Robots in Service of the Environment decided to step in. It was started by the guy who made the Roomba vacuum cleaner. He went diving and saw the devastation and said he could build a robot to fix it. They built the Guardian LF-1. It looks like something from a movie. It is a remote robot tethered to a boat, but it is not just a camera, it is an executioner. The Guardian has two paddles on the front that act like stun guns. The pilot on the boat drives the robot up to a fish and zap. A jolt of electricity stuns the fish instantly. Then a suction tube vacuums it into a chamber. It is a Roomba for the reef, but it sucks up predators. Then you have other designs like the Reef Sweeper. This thing is a tank designed to go deep and harvest fish on a huge scale. The idea is to bring them up and sell them. Turn the enemy into lunch. These machines were the game changers. They could go to 1,000 feet and stay down for hours. They did not need to breathe or decompress. They were the perfect soldiers. Yeah, about that, because once the cameras finally reached the bottom, the excitement turned into pure dread. The researchers were prepared for a scientific breakthrough, but they weren't prepared for a horror movie. The terrifying reality of the deep swarms. When researchers deployed high-tech robots into the deep sea reefs, they anticipated a modest validation of their sensors, perhaps 20 fish for sampling to prove the technology was viable. They were entirely unprepared for what the ocean was hiding in its lightless corners. As the screens on the support vessel flickered to life with grainy, high-definition feeds, the pilots steered the drones over the continental shelf, plunging into the midnight zone. Floodlights cut through the eternal gloom like scalpels, revealing a landscape that shifted from vibrant coral to a jagged alien topography. Then the silhouettes appeared, first dozens, then hundreds, then thousands. The cheering on the boat died into a haunting silence. 
At depths exceeding 300 feet, far beyond the reach of human divers, the lionfish were no longer tucked away under ledges. They were out in the open, hovering in massive, shimmering clouds. This was a lionfish paradise, a deep water fortress where super females grew to nearly 19 inches, double the average size. These behemoths were pumping out 2 million eggs every week, effectively acting as an untouchable nursery that fueled the shallow water invasion. We were merely mowing the lawn while the roots grew stronger in the dark. The footage revealed something even more chilling, behavior that defied biological norms. In the shallows, lionfish are solitary. Here they hunted in organized packs like underwater wolves coordinating to corner prey against rock walls. Biologists began to fear a deep-sea gigantism effect or a cognitive shift toward collective intelligence. Some even proposed the hive mind hypothesis, suggesting the fish use pheromones to create complex chemical maps of the sea floor. This discovery has forced a shift from manual removal to high-tech sabotage. We cannot build a billion robots to patrol the vast abyss, so the strategy has turned to genetic hacking and Terminator drones. Scientists are simulating the release of daughterless males to collapse the population from within, while autonomous machines equipped with computer vision roam the depths, recognizing stripes and firing pneumatic bolts. The deep ocean is no longer a secret. It is the next battlefield. We are playing a high-stakes game of chess against an opponent that reproduces by the millions in a realm where we cannot breathe. As we watch the invasion turn the maps red, we must ask, are we the guardians of the sea or are we simply watching its transformation in high definition? So that is the terrifying truth about what is happening beneath the waves. It makes you wonder what else is hiding down there that we haven't found yet? Do you think automated robots are the answer or have we already lost the battle for the Atlantic? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to see more deep sea mysteries uncovered, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. See you in the deep.